Hello, I'm Hal Lublin. And I'm Mark Gagliardi. Since the dawn of humanity, one issue has gone unsettled. With the fate of the world in the balance, we're here to settle once and for all. Cake versus pie. That's right. Don't worry, everyone. We got this. Podcast should have a theme song. Podcast should not have a theme song. Yes, they should. No, they shouldn't. They sound good. Yeah, but people are just going to skip past it. Hmm. You know what? You're right. We got this. Double doink. <laughs> well, here it is, Hal, the double doink episode. Yes, this is, I'm so sad to be recording this after the Eagles are already out of the playoffs. I know. The reason that we are recording, Hal picked this topic from our list, um, and the reason that Hal got to choose the topic, I don't know who saw this on the Facebook page or not, um, we had a bet going, I like the Bears, he likes the Eagles, mm-hmm. and uh, the Eagles beat the Bears in the playoffs because of a double doink missed field goal. Uh, by the Chicago Bears at the very end of the game. Uh, so this was Hal's choice, and I w- I said I will do whichever topic you want to do. Yes. So I've chosen cake versus pie. This is suggested by Haley Thompson a very long time ago. Hi, Haley Thompson. Thank you for your patience. See, yes. uh, there was one playoff miracle left in the, er- the uh, Eagles bag. And it was getting us this topic. That's right. Uh, and I'm, I, I said pick one that I wouldn't like, and you picked one that I actually love. I picked one that you didn't want to do for a while because it had appeared on a on another show that does yes. that did debates that is no longer around. Yeah, we survived. We survived. That show did not. We are the cockroaches. That's right. Uh, and also our good friend Paul. This was a uh, staple of his of his stand up act mm-hmm. for many years, which was retired. I believe right. the album Impersonal. <laughs> Right. I believe that was the last time he performed that bit. Right. And uh, I don't know that bit. I just didn't want to step on any toes in any way. But now I'm more than happy to do it. Um, <laughs> We're going to trample. We are going to trample all over Paul F. Tompkins. Yes. And uh, that other debate show that I don't remember. Debate war? I don't remember. Sure. Yeah. Why even say the whole thing? Yeah. Who I knows? Know. Um, so we're talking cake or pie today. Yes, we are. Uh, how do you want to approach this? Well, geez, I, you know, they're, they are different from one another. First of all, we're, we're establishing cheesecake is a pie. Yes. Cheesecake is a pie. And I would I, also I hate that. I know. I would also further like to establish, mm-hmm. um, we are talking cake and pie in their myriad forms. Okay. So we're not just talking about a modern 2019 dessert cake or a dessert pie. Okay. Um, which I, if, if you will agree to that. Sure. That seems fair to me. I'm interested to see where you take it based on that. Well, there's a lot of, but it, here's the thing. I did a lot of research on this yes. episode. Um, and what it seems to have come down to is, um, cakes are for special occasions and pies are utilitarian. Okay. Um, the going into way deep into the history of it. Uh, pies originally were not sweet at all. They were, uh, meat pies or other savory dishes, uh, and originated by the Egyptians, mm-hmm. um, several thousand years ago for a very specific reason. And that was you could fit more food on a ship if it was in pie form mm. than you could if you had to keep plates and bowls and utensils and all of that on a ship. So they would, they would pack, uh, they would pack, uh, grains and whatever else they needed to make a really, really heavy hard dough, mm-hmm. uh, that would encase a pie. And back then it didn't even function as something that you ate. It functioned as the Tupperware for the pie. So it was like Papa John's pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> yes, basically. Okay, got it. Um and uh and the you wouldn't even you wouldn't even eat the crust. They didn't even call it pie back then. They called it coffins. Yeah. <laughs> so you would eat a coffin full of food. So it was where your meals went to die? Yeah, I think so. So does that mean if there was no crust on the top it was open casket? <laughs> That's open <laughs> casket food? Yeah, exactly. Oh wait, hold on. My wife what? is here cuz I wanted to ask you earlier. <laughs> do we have our, do we still have our cake topper? This is, we're talking about cake versus pie. Do we still have it? 
You're asking, all right, Jennifer's checking right now in the cabinet filled with DVDs. And My posters. ex-girlfriend and I, years ago, when you guys got married, threw you a party for yes. your wedding in Los you Angeles. made us a topper. We made you a topper, which Hal, <laughs> seconds before we went on air, said, eh, we might have lost it in one of the purges. There were purges. I Listen. know. Do you mean, do you mean purge like we're getting rid of junk in the apartment or do you mean when the government shut down and somebody stole it from you because they could? Once a year, we have all, we make murder legal in our apartment for all of our household objects. So whatever <laughs> is left. Yeah. That's, that's what it is. Jennifer has pulled out so a So your actual cake, things. your actual cake topper killed your LA cake topper. Yeah. Oh, there we hey, go. There there we still have it. They still, we still have, have it. it. Oh, that makes me oh, yeah, very happy. Sure of it. I'm going to take a picture, and I'll post it. <laughs> Look at that. The, you will see uh, that blue thing <laughs> in the bottom right corner is, is my wife, Jennifer, ducking out of the picture. <laughs> well, she ducked away the second you said, ooh, Jennifer. She went just right out of the room, yeah. and you're like, no, 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 come on in. Yeah. <laughs> I love that you still have that. Oh, it did not get purged. That's right. That means it killed the other cake topper. That's right. The other cake yeah. topper is dead. Oh, wait. <laughs> no, there it is. Ah, oh, look at that. This looks like neither of this, – this, this cake topper looks more like you now than this ever looked like me. <laughs> Do you agree, Jennifer? <laughs> it's not me it's not no it looks like action figures it looks like you eloped with ken and then i caught you like uh like the end of the graduate you got on a bus <laughs> with me and then we got married spoiler sorry sorry we don't know that they got married they just sat there and stared into the middle distance does he go into plastics mm-hmm. oh, okay yeah that's Great. the way of the future uh <laughs> boy that is a fascinating collection of memorabilia we have there wedding memorabilia look at that Thank that you. and that exactly illustrates my point yes cake is a special a cake is a special occasion food um specifically because it was so labor intensive right um and pies have just been around forever w- are we counting something like a loaf of banana bread i know it's bread but that's mm-hmm. technically a cake right or like a lemon loaf or a banana loaf are those cakes there's it's amazing what is considered technically a cake um, the, the word cake, uh, in the sense that we use it actually used to mean something as simple as like you would say your mud was caked onto your shoe, right? It was grains that were, uh, pounded and then mixed with a liquid of some sort pressed flat and then cooked like a Papa John's pizza. Yeah. Like a Papa John's pizza, uh-huh. which is technically a pie. Sure. Um, sure. Actually, yes. it might technically not even be food. Do we- <laughs> I'm f- pretty sure it's not. This episode brought to you by Papa John's Pizza. Yeah. Are you in college and hungry? What else are you going to do? Yeah. Papa John's Pizza. Throw away the pizza and just drink that garlic butter sauce. <laughs> hey, do you like three old peppers <laughs> and a tub of <laughs> spicy butter? Hey, do you like a box under your bed with the stems from the re- those three old peppers in it? <laughs> Did you have that? Did oh, you have yeah. a box of stems? Oh, yeah. <laughs> periodically look man i once found a papa john's pizza under my bed that i did not know had been there <laughs> in the dorm room i didn't know how long it had been there we taste tested it weirdly it still tasted like a papa john's pizza oh you tasted it oh sure sure oh that's college right yeah oh yeah look there was a day that i was so excited when i found a quarter uh, because I could buy a banana. That that was the end of the semester in college. We got real broke, real broke. I really was. I was like, oh man, a quarter. I can get a banana. <laughs> this yeah. is living. You didn't have a meal plan? Yeah, but I burned through the meal plan in the first week. First week of the semester, we all ate like kings. You ate, but it's by meals, right? I thought it was by like the nah, number. It was, like- uh, it was by money where we went to school. Oh, we had yeah. like, you get a certain number of meals. So you get a meal card and whatever plan you were on, that was how many times you ate. You'd get like breakfast, lunch, dinner, or breakfast, dinner. And oh, ours was, lunch. ours was like a debit card. Oh, so at the no. beginning of the semester, it was, uh, it was a quarter. Actually, we did quarters at my school. Okay. Um, at the beginning of the quarter, uh, it was, uh, oh, a chicken strip basket is three strips. Great. I'll have 30 chicken strips, please. Oh, and each item, it wasn't like I'm going down. That's all you can eat buffet. No, no, no. What did they serve you? Where did you did you go to college at that restaurant from It's a Living that's on top of the <laughs> hotel? I went to I went to uh college at that um the um 
uh, I want to, what's the name of that? Oh, I <laughs> wish I could have pulled that name out quickly enough. The restaurant that Meryl Streep and Albert Brooks ate at where none of the calories count. Oh yeah. And, and, uh, uh, defending your life. Defending your life. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You ate there. Oh man. That was I what we I went, wish we had like all you could eat. But one time I got in trouble. Because, you know, we would do – is you Because you literally ate all that you could <laughs> yeah. physically eat. I sat there just spread out like Jabba the Hutt. You know, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, I – they – Dropping salacious crumbs all over yeah. your shirt. <laughs> they were going <laughs> – <laughs> They had these cookies. They were like chocolate chip cookies but with M&Ms in them. Uh-huh. And, and the move was you'd get an extra uh, paper napkin. Mm-hmm. You'd wrap up like six of them, mm-hmm. put it in your bag. Mm-hmm. And then have it later. You have it in between classes. You have it at your dorm room. Sure. But like I – I did that with mashed potatoes. We paid for the meal. Yeah. You get mashed potatoes, whatever it is. You put yeah. it in Whatever in you paper. put in a napkin. Yeah. You put I had to make a, a bindle. <laughs> I had to make a little bindle, a little mashed potato bindle. Sure. That I would poke with a fork mm-hmm. uh, and then mashed potatoes would just kind of uh, drop out of it throughout the day. <laughs> it would be like a cartoon yeah. when somebody drinks too much and then falls on a pitchfork. <laughs> the, they, what, the logic was, all right, we paid for these. Right. I'm going to take a whole bunch of cookies. And the, one of the lunch ladies caught me. It was like, you have to eat those all here. You can't take them. You can't take food out of the dining room. And I was like, okay. I mean, it makes sense. Look, you can't go to a Vegas buffet and leave with a tote bag full of lobster tails. I'm not going to eat 20 cookies here in one city. What I am going to do is eat two cookies and make the rest of them uh, into the letters F-U and leave my tray on the table. <laughs> you are such a... A weird jerk. I know. <laughs> it's very selective. I don't uh, mean you're always weird and you're always a jerk. Yeah. It's when you decide to be a jerk, it's always in hilarious, weird ways. It's way. very weird. Like, yeah. that's as rebellious as I get. Yeah, exactly. But then they, uh, I got reported and I had to write a letter of apology. Was it just, I will not write F you in cookies over and over again? <laughs> or did you write it once and then it scratched into your hand? Like, <laughs> uh, like Professor Umbridge's Special quill. I had to take uh, all the cookies they had there and write it out as many times as I could <laughs> across all the tables. I don't want to talk about it. It was a very uh, sad time in my life. But they're, they're really – they didn't have cake. I guess it is a special cake. Is being sad a special occasion? <laughs> because sometimes you're sad and you just – you get some cake. You get yeah. like a sli- – now here we have like Susie Cakes, which is a really good bakery mm-hmm. where you can go get a slice. You don't have to go get a whole cake. You can get a slice of cake. Yeah. You can do that at my, uh, my diner down the street from yeah, where I live. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So that – but in general, cake is a special treat. But you can right. get cake anywhere. If you go to a rest, if you're going out, you can have either one. Mm-hmm. Right? If you go to a diner, they have every dessert sure. known to man. If you go to a fancy restaurant, they have all kinds of fa- special fancy desserts. Some of them are cakes. Some of them are flourless cakes, which I don't count that. I don't like that. That's not a cake. That's a mound of something. It's a lump of hot chocolate. Yeah. Which is not bad. No, it's delicious. But don't call it a cake. Don't call it a flourless cake. And it, That's oddly, like calling it pasta-less spaghetti. <laughs> doesn't it taste like flour? Uh, it's really dry. Like a flourless cake? It takes, tastes like only flour. Yeah, exactly. It tastes like a bunch of flour in a lump. Um, but while we're talking cakes. Yes. Um, the, uh, what is your favorite kind of cake? My favorite kind of cake is German chocolate. Oh, yeah. I, I do like I a German do chocolate love cake. A German what chocolate is in cake? German chocolate cake that makes a German chocolate cake? Coconut? There's coconut and, and, uh, I think it's walnuts. Okay. In the frosting. Mm-hmm. But it's like a rich chocolate cake. It layered. And mm-hmm. then, the I can't remember exactly wh- how you make the the frosting. The frosting is exceptional, but <coughs> excuse me, I like the frosting on its own, but it needs to be on the cake. I'm not one of my dad will get a slice of cake, mm-hmm. and then when he's done with the plate, it will just be dry cake left. He will eat the frosting. He will only eat the frosting. That's all he wants is the frosting. Really? So if we get a cake, it's like put extra frosting on it. He wants frosting. See, I w- – then your dad and I are like the sprats because I will eat minim- – I will like the slice of cake that has the least amount of frosting on it. I do like the frosting on a cake, but I like that spongy cakiness. Yeah. If the cake is done mm. well, if the, if it's cooked properly, mm. then it, it almost doesn't matter what frosting is on it. The cake yeah. should taste should taste really good on its own. Yeah. Um what about you? What's your favorite kind of cake? Uh, yellow cake with chocolate frosting on it. Like a birth, like a straight oh, up yeah. yellow birthday cake with chocolate frosting. Oh man. Uh, one of Jennifer's cousins makes this hundred layer cake. 
So you take, How tall is that? It's it's thin because each layer is almost pa- – it's not actually a hundred layer. It has however many layers It's it a is. ream of cake? It is a whole ream of cake <laughs> and you just fill it and when you're done, you put it in the cartridge and then you have to – you can order them by a case. You you make a very thin layer of yellow cake mm-hmm. and then you put the chocolate on it and you ice it. So if you cut – if you take a cross section of a piece, mm-hmm. it looks like pieces of paper. It looks like the like a cross section of a book. Mm, okay. And it's so – the cake is so good. And the chocolate frosting is so good. Like they just work together perfectly. Every bite, a good composed bite has right. plenty of both. Now is, is that technically a cake? Because is it leavened? That's one of the things that makes a cake a cake also that I've like modern day cakes. Yeah. Is, uh, is leavening. In a, and in a pie, there's not really any leavening agent. It is, it is leavened. It's just you're putting so little of the cake batter in that it's, it's oh, a I very see. thin layer. Just so it takes, thin. it takes a very long time to make yeah. because you have to be so precise. Right. With how you're making it. So I know oh. it takes her a very long time when she makes it, but it is, it is what I haven't, the last time I had it was maybe five years ago, maybe five plus years ago, but mm-hmm. I remember, I remember the taste of it very, very well. Yeah. It's it stuck with me. What is a cake that you remember the look of better than any other cake? Because growing up, the birthday cake, that was always a big decision. Mm-hmm. It was always, what do you want on your birthday cake? And I was like, oh, man, what do I want on my birthday cake this year? We had an amazing bakery when I was a kid. Uh-huh. That Because back then, you it wasn't like decals or printouts like you can get now. You can get a photograph printed onto a cake, which is amazing and cool. Sure. But back then, this was uh, they would airbrush and they had stencils and like mm-hmm. sh- airbrush sugar on there. I remember having a perfect R2-D2 cake when I was a little kid. Was it in the shape of R2-D2 and then no, airbrushed? No, it was. It was an airbrushed picture of R2-D2 on the cake that this bakery did on oh, a awesome. regular sheet cake. Love it. Yeah. That and a, and a beautiful like silver era Superman. Oh, yeah. that's also a really good mm-hmm. one. I think the one of my cakes I remember the most is maybe from my fifth birthday, fifth or sixth, mm-hmm. which was a He-Man cake. Oh, so he's standing there. I think maybe Battle Cat was on it as well, but he's standing uh-huh. there with his axe, Battle Axe, uh, Battle Axe He-Man, but it was like the cheapest, uh, frosting. It was like the gel. Instead of royal <laughs> icing, it's that gel icing where it's oh, like, that's like toothpaste. Is, yeah. Is this toothpaste? Have you put toothpaste yeah. on here? But also, I always remember we would go to the Country Club Diner in Northeast Philadelphia a lot. Mm-hmm. And they were they were a diner, but primarily they'd been a bakery. Right. So they bake all their cookies and cakes on premises. And they would always have cakes out on display and a catalog of what you could order. And the The cake the, catalog was always so exciting for me. It was so great. We would go in and yeah, we would go into our local bakery and it, you'd thumb through and you're like, Oh, I want the no 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 no. I want that no 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 no. I want this one. No 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 no. <laughs> but I love when they would take a cake. And yes, they would paint, they would paint like a, it would be painted like a hockey rink, mm-hmm. but then they would put plastic hockey players. So you'd have the actual yeah, the miracle. Toys, yeah. You're done. The miracle on ice is happening on my <laughs> cake right now, or it's a river with a little plastic right. bridge on it. Oh yeah. I like the tableau cakes. Yeah. Those were always really impressive to me. I remember two cakes from when I was a kid. Uh, one of them is now immortalized in a book that my mother made this year as a Christmas gift. It was very sweet. We all got a, she went through thousands of photos and gave us, made the, you know, like a snapfish book for us. Nice. And, uh, one of the cakes that was on it was my sister's cake. And it was, I do like one that isn't a, a shape. You know, like you watch like Ace of Cakes in these shows where they're just building oh my God. sculptures and these cakes. I'm sure are delicious, but that's not the point. The point is that they're these beautiful ornate sculptures and they have, dowels and stuff in them yes um she had a cake it was a mound uh that had been decorated to look like a bag of money uh <laughs> and there were like little pieces of dollar bills like fake you know yeah uh, toy money sticking out the top <laughs> so it looked like one of those like old timey bags of cash it had the <laughs> dollar sign on the side and uh there was a mouse next to it dressed like a burglar who was going and <laughs> I just remember looking at this cake going, man, how's that mouse going to steal that great big bag of money? And what's a mouse going to do with a regular great big dollar bill? That cake was amazing. And then the second, uh, the cake that all time greatest, I think this was my dad's 40th when I was a little kid. It was one of my dad's birthdays and his cake was a mound of brown and it was chocolate frosting Mm -hmm. and it looked like what a little kid would do snickering the whole time if he could make any shape he wanted out of a big mound of brown frosting. <laughs> and there were gummy worms sort of snaking through it. Oh, and no. 
as a garnish on the side, a little wad of toilet paper with a swoosh of the frosting on it. Oh, that's so nasty. It was hilarious. <laughs> was it eaten? Yeah, of course it was eaten. It was the first bite, though, has to be – your mind has to play tricks on you, right? Where you're oh, like, yeah. am I eating a duty? Yeah. Could I be eating a duty? I'm eating a duty. The, Are they messing paper? with me? Yeah. They me- There's toilet paper there. This clearly is a duty. Is this the help? <laughs> Their hidden camera show? Oh, my God. Am I going to be too slice hilly Ugh. for the rest of my life if um, I have this cake? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they, just by having this conversation points out that cakes are a special occasion thing. They are. They um, are. Yeah. Let's talk about pie. Okay. Um, what's your favorite? We've, now we just, we've already determined the best pie is apple pie. Apple pie is the best pie. We've already determined that. What is your favorite? My favorite pie is cherry pie. That's my favorite too. I love a cherry pie. A house of pies in Los Angeles makes a cherry and sour cream pie. Mm, Yes. Which is creamy. It's tart. It's delicious. It's, ah, yeah. Do you like a lattice on top? Do you like a crust on top? Did we, I know we talked about this, but we might as well talk about it. As long as the crust is made well. Mm-hmm. And it's not an afterthought. If it has flavor to it, mm-hmm. I don't care. I think I prefer a lattice though, because you get thicker. You have a little bit more dough mm-hmm. behind it. There's a little bit more weight there. Generally, the the crust on top. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Lattice. I think I like a lattice work. If the, assuming that the crust is well made, how about I think you? a lattice is prettier. Yes, it is. Uh, and can be prettier. Sure. I've seen some fully domed cakes that are, uh, fully covered pies that are, have, you know, intricate little leaves made out of the excess, uh, dough and all of that. But yeah, yeah, in general, like a cherry pie with a lattice on top, man, there is nothing more iconically pie to me than that. Sure. Um, savory pie. Are you a savory pie guy? I do like Australian pies. I like like a chicken and vegetable pie. Oh yeah. Those what was the name really of that place good. we went to? Garlo? Oh, I don't remember the name place in Australia. There's it was like place- pies, pies, pies. <laughs> pies, was, pies, pies. It was something like that yeah. though. What pies, pies, pies? Right. Uh here there's a place called Garlo's. Garlo's mm-hmm. Aussie Pies. That's very, very good. Uh they brought lunch to the place where I work a couple times, and that was a huge treat mm-hmm. anytime you get something from there. So I don't hate them. I, yeah. Is a quiche a pie? A quiche is yeah, a pie. Yeah, quiche is a pie. Quiche is fine. Quiche is a pie. Uh, a hot pocket is a pie. Oh, that's a stretch. An empanada is a pie. All of these are pies. This is when you calzone think about like, a, pie. a calzone is a pie. Stromboli. And I'm going to go out right now and I'm going to say we could do a whole episode about this. And this might be what tips it in favor. A pizza is a pie. It is. The word pizza means pie. I just, uh, you know, when I think about it here, it's definitely function wise, the pie mm. wins hands down. That's the thing. And that's why, that's why this is difficult because I think we can look at it like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, you no, no, up? you go ahead. The, we can look at it in a couple of ways. We can look at it as does utility beat a special occasion? Right. Um, in the history of the world, I think the pie has been more important. I think, Armies have marched on pies or navies have sailed on pies. Right. Um, but gosh, there's nothing like a special occasion. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's something magical about a beautiful birthday cake or a beautiful wedding cake or any of a number of occasions where you would get a cake. Um, here's some fun, uh, fun facts that I learned today. Can I, can I drop some fun facts Please. of, uh, of cake that yeah. I learned? Um, the reason that, uh, cakes have always been a special occasion food is many fold. Um, one is that, uh, they're not, the ingredients aren't hard to get, but they are difficult to turn into a cake traditionally. Right. Because you used to not be able to get granulated sugar. You had to get sugar in a cone, just this big block cone of sugar. And it would take a lot of time and effort to, get this uh, sugar down into a form where you could bake it, sifting and chopping and um, scraping and all of that. Yeah. And also, um, cakes took off after the invention of the whisk. Okay. Because of uh, because it needed that leavening agent. Um, starting in, what was it, the 16th century or something like that, uh, the first sponge cake was invented uh, in a royal court. Imagine that moment. 
uh, you've invented the first sponge cake. You present it to the king. You're like, I don't know if he's going to like this. Yeah. You've invented a brand new food. <laughs> Luckily, that brand new food was freaking cake. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame that that person was killed anyway, right? Yeah, right. I know. Yeah, so that they could never make anything as beautiful ever again, just like the Taj Mahal. Uh-huh. <laughs> Too bad. Shouldn't have invented sponge cake yeah. if you wanted to live. Exactly. That's the real lesson of cake. Um, but also that uh, Puritans... Uh, the Puritans in England, the terrible, awful prudes that they were, they, we've talked about them on this show many times because they, <laughs> they, uh, may, they illegalized, banned, what's the word? Illegalized seems sure. probably right. Yeah. Uh, Christmas, theater, and cake. Come on, guys. That's terrible. The only three days of the year you could eat cake were, uh, Christmas, Good Friday, and, uh, and I think at weddings. Okay. Like, like special occasions. I do have to say a wedding cake. Let's not like if you go to a wedding, the cake is always a big deal. It is. When we go, we were just at my and cousin's it's never wedding. The tastiest cake I've ever had. They're, but they're it's really always the good prettiest. Cake. The cake, the wedding we just went to was really good cake. I cannot remember mm-hmm. a thing about it except that I really liked it. But when it, when it got wheeled out, mm-hmm. first of all, when, if Jennifer and I, if we're going to your wedding, she will, the second we walk into the reception hall, she will find the cake and walk over to it and look at it. Like, <laughs> like, uh, like the people who stole the Mona Lisa, like casing, <laughs> like, all right, what is this about? Let me take a look here. Perugia. Yeah. And when it's time to cut it, she drags me over to like, where's the best view to see the cake being cut? Oh. And then when is the cake coming? Like, she just she loves. She just gets excited about a wedding cake. She gets so excited. She loves wedding cakes so much. <laughs> Uh, quick sidebar. Yes. My brother told me the other day that he figured out what his favorite, uh, or his, uh, a guy that, uh, that he works with, Jamie, who's hilarious. Yes. Uh, he said, Gabe, I figured out, uh, what your favorite genre of music is. And he said, what's that? And he said, wedding. Cause those are the songs that my brother listens to. <laughs> what he listens like, to cool, cool in the, the gang. gang and <laughs> shout and, uh, the electric slide. Yeah. So when he picked you up in the airport, you heard slide to the left, <laughs> slide to the right. Yeah. <laughs> Crisscross. Reverse, reverse. No, don't reverse. You gotta pick me up. I'm up here. But reverse, reverse just means keep driving forward. That's right? true. Yeah. Thank goodness. <laughs> so Thank goodness they put that in the song just in case somebody was following their orders while driving. They were like, back it up. No, yeah. wait, hold no, on. Wait. We can't do that. We have to be responsible. Yeah. Do not, you do not want to drive on the freeway behind the guy who is sliding to the left, yeah. sliding to the right. You know how susceptible people who listen to our music are <laughs> to our every whim. <laughs> they take everything we do literally and they follow it to the letter. We've oh. got to put reverse, reverse in there. They'll figure it out. <laughs> uh, I think here's what I would propose. Okay. I think. I think if we just said there are more types of pie, there are yeah. sweet, savory, yeah. that it's the that as a food category, mm-hmm. it is vastly superior. It is vastly superior. But but I think we should take a look at it as a dessert only. I want to go. I want to go deserto a deserto deserta as okay. deserta. So let's take a break. Okay. Let's recalibrate. Oh man. And then we're going to come back in and You're we're really going to talk crippling dessert. my pizza argument. I really want to go for, well, cause I, if the pie may still win, mm-hmm. overall we recognize that as a category of food, the pie mm-hmm. is superior to the cake, just in utility, in historical significance even. Right. Let them eat cake meant something different. Right. Uh, than let them eat a layer cake. That's not what that means. <laughs> right. Um, so let's, let's take a break and let's come back and let's talk dessert. Cause I think, when I when I look at this, that's what I expect. Mm-hmm. We'll do that. Great. Sound good? Sounds good. All right. Let's get some cake. Hi, I'm Allie Gertz. And I'm Julia Prescott. And we're the host of Everything's, Everything's Coming, Coming Up, Up Simpsons. Simpsons. Every episode, we cover a different episode of The Simpsons and that is a favorite of our special guests. We've had guests that are showrunners and writers and voice actors like Nancy Cartwright. I got a D minus, I passed! And we've also had people that are on the Max Fun Network already. We've had Weird Al Yankovic on the show. I was just uh, struck by how sharp the writing is. I mean, that's yeah. no surprise because it's The Simpsons, but I mean, like, you, you can't say that about a lot, a, lot of, a lot of TV shows, particularly ones that at that point had been on the air for 14 years. Find us on MaximumFun.org, iTunes, or wherever you get your podcasts. All right. Smell you later. Hi. 
Hi, I am Lori Kilmartin. And I'm Jackie Cashin. Together, we host a podcast called The Jackie and Lori Show. Uh, we're both stand up comics. We recently met each other because women weren't allowed to work together on, uh, on the road or in gigs for a long, long time. And so our friendship has been unfolding on this podcast for a couple of years. Jackie constantly works the road. I write for Conan and then I work the road in between. We do a lot of stand-up comedy. And so we celebrate stand-up and yes. we also bitch about it. We keep it to an hour. We don't have any guests. We somehow find enough to co- talk about every single week. So find us. You can subscribe to The Jackie and Lori Show at MaximumFun.com org or wherever you get your podcasts okay bye that was delicious oh, so good Man. is is a brownie a cake um it's a brownie its own i yeah i guess it is a cake okay right okay that brownie's a, a cake that is a big point that is a big point for in cake's favor yeah because it's just a, a super Sunday. dense short chocolate cake yes. right we're if there are bakers that are listening to this show going no a brownie's not a cake like freaking out right now yeah, send us brownies yeah send us brownies and we will eat them and we will gladly say you are right and also send us a cake yeah and also uh right now turn your radio to uh, a station that is playing that uh crisscross song <laughs> crisscross <laughs> not the crisscross song uh jump everybody clap your hands yeah that's my favorite yeah. part <laughs> is that your favorite part of any song? When they do that at a when sporting you get to event, clap your hands. I'm so excited to do the clap. I'm like, I'm gonna keep it up. You will not stop me. I will. Every one of you will drop before I finish clapping. I will outlast all of you. I'm the best clapper there is. Even You're the that guy only guy like, left doing the wave. The guy who's doing like the super fast oh, clapping. Yeah, the, yeah. I'm not, I can't even do it fast. That's, sure. This is my speed. You're if you've ever seen Stomp, that's a whole big scene in Stomp. Yeah, yeah. What? Stomp is great. It is fantastic. The HBO special was not good. <laughs> what did they felt the need to tell a story behind uh, it? Like, yeah, yeah. They're in a clubhouse. And they added dragons. Yeah. Yeah. And Bobby Cannavale doing cocaine. Like, they just mishmashed all of their HBO shows into yeah. one. Yeah. Arliss was there banging yeah. a trash can. Sure. Pete Holmes was on the couch. Yeah. I didn't care for it. <laughs> I'd rather see the stage show. <laughs> and every once in a while, the Crypt Keeper would laugh. Do you remember the SNL sketch, Clappin'? No. It was the, it was the, uh, it was during the time of Stomp and it was the new Broadway musical. And it was just people clapping <laughs> on stage and doing like different claps. And that was it. That's basically what Stomp was for a real long chunk of the show. Before one of them threw something out and was like, listen to that trash can. What if we <laughs> just rhythm on. everywhere? Wait, it's you, sir, Mr. Custodian, hand me that broom. <laughs> Great. Do you have 19 more? <laughs> what? No, I don't have 19 brooms. Only need one broom. We only ever needed one broom around here. <laughs> Stage ain't that big. <laughs> but boy, you kids fill it. <laughs> You'll see. One day I'm going to do a show with hundreds of brooms and so many trash cans. All it's right, be a huge all hit. right. I got to stomp off over here to that corner. What am I going to call it? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about cake and pie. Oh, I know. Bring into noise, bring into <laughs> funk. Is that one taken? <laughs> all right, cakes and pies. Fine, fine, yeah. fine. Um, I like for me personally, and I, does this just come down to personal taste? No, one of them has to be empirically better than the other. That's what we do here. We don't talk about tastes. <laughs> well, we're, I know we're taste making. That's all right. Yeah. All right. Great. So, uh, pie. <laughs> the Stop end. it. What about hostess? Hostess has pies and, and they have has cupcakes. Cake. Cupcake is cake. Sure. We agree to that. Yeah, cupcake is a cake. Can I can I say something that's probably going to be unpopular? Man, this is tough because cupcakes, brownies, and cakes all fit into – if we're just doing dessert. Yeah, all of a sudden the tide turns. Yeah, it does. Can you say something uh, – About cupcakes? Talk? Sure. I, I think they are overrated. Really? Yes. I think oftentimes the cake is poorly done and it has the fro- – like I hate now – it feels like now people do like the frosting toupee where – the frosting sits in like a in like a design on top. Mm-hmm. But you can see the edges of the mm-hmm. of the cupcake. T- that thing should be covered. <laughs> Have you no sense of decency? Do you know the best way to eat a cupcake? Yes. Yeah. Do you want to tell everybody? Uh, you can do it. You tear the bottom off, mm-hmm. and then you put it on the top. You make a sandwich. Oh, it's so good. You get everything. It's so good. I was taught that by Molly Lewis. Oh yeah, that is who taught me. Thanks, Molly. Yes, is that a, is that just Molly's invention, or is that a that's? I mean, somebody had to have done it first. Like 
Somebody did. I, in my world, Molly is the alpha and the omega of, of, of cupcake, cupcake sandwiches. Eating. But you knew it already too. Where did you learn it? You didn't no, learn I learned. I think. I think I may have learned it from you. From me? Yeah. Really? I might have. I'm such a bad influence. So she's the alpha and the omega, but you're so, you're maybe like the omicron. I'm the yeah. I'm okay. Orson Welles. <laughs> Here's what you do. Take the cupcake. He doesn't do anything. Um, there's right. a cupcake by Paul Masson. Are you a Red Velvet fan? Sure. Ding, Red Velvet. Ding, double Red oh Velvet. Oh, my God. Did Red Velvet just get its wings? I think so. Uh, uh, all right. I'm going to turn this. Uh, that's Mark's phone. That's my phone. Sometimes Mark leaves his phone on. Sometimes I leave my phone on. Or was that the oven? Oh, that's another little factoid that I found out. Oh, what? In the, um, in the creation of cakes. Yes. Um, they, because cakes require so many things to go right for them to be mass produced. You have to have so many different things. You have to have a whisk. You have to have, um, sugar granulated. You also have to have, uh, an oven where you can set the temperature. Right. Another oh, so thing. that's yeah. why that exists and yeah. is, is because of cakes. Um, one more. Oh, man. Seriously, I dove today. Like it is, I had a weird day of watching cake documentaries <laughs> and pie documentaries. You watch cake documentaries? I watch cake documentaries. Um, cakes. This is another one. In, this is another point in cakes' favor. Um, cakes in tea rooms because mm-hmm. tea was always associated with small cakes or a full size cake that was cut into small pieces. And in the late nineteenth century. Tea rooms became ubiquitous, uh, throughout the Western world as women gained more, uh, power in the, in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and they weren't these little fancy places, like these little dainty, um, tea shops. They were the equivalent of what men, when men would go to the tavern and talk about the politics of the day, women would go to these ginormous tea rooms and talk about the politics and the issues of the day. And that's where the suffrage movement was born. So, oh, cakes, uh, were instrumental in suffrage. That's a huge, uh, that's a huge historical uh, point in yeah. favor of cakes. Mm-hmm. Wait, were you, were, you were going to sit on that and just let pies coast? Yeah. Well, look, I like pies. <laughs> I'm Italian. I want pizza to win. Pizza's a pie, Hal. <laughs> it is a pie. I can't argue that. I um, cannot argue it. Uh, when you go to a restaurant, yes, you sit down. Yes. You have a menu. You've eaten your meal. You're looking at the dessert menu. Do you go for a cake or do you go for a pie? First of all, let me back you up. Uh-huh. I sit down. I look at the menu. In 30 seconds, I know what I'm going to order, and I'm already on to desserts. <laughs> I'm already planning. I'm like, all right, this sure. becomes – You're like, give me the whatever food is tan. Yes, give me yeah. the tannest food. The tannest you have. food. Do you have chicken fingers and fries? I will do that. Take it easy on the flavor, please. <laughs> and and then I'm looking at the uh, at the dessert menu immediately to see what am I going to have. Yeah. So what your question is? What do I order? What do you order? If there's a cake on there, there's a chocolate cake on there. Regular, not German. Um, not the Germans aren't regular. Um, and a uh and a key lime pie. Oh, chocolate cake over okay. a key lime pie. It's a chocolate cake and an apple pie. Apple pie, no okay. question. So it's really determined by okay, a uh, vanilla cake and an apple pie. Apple pie, vanilla cake and a key lime pie. Oh, I knew I'd get to, to one. I knew I, I'd get to I'd one. I'd say we're going somewhere else. <laughs> I always have a backup. I'm like, is, listen, we could do dessert here, or we can go to blah blah blah. How and get dessert? You are the connoisseur of desserts, I and try. it drives me crazy after shows. <laughs> You know this. I've told you this many times. That's because you want to drink your dessert. Yes, because we want to. It's the show is over. We all we want to go out into a bar and 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 socialize and have a drink. And I'm like, how? Where do you want to go after the show? You're always like, I got this great place. And we go down the street and there's a bar right there. And we're like, oh man, this bar looks cool. They got like Edison bulbs. And we walk right past the bar to the pie shop next door. Yeah, of course we do. <laughs> uh, that's because for me, it's still I still think of it as a high school show. Like, <laughs> right? I'm sure. Sure. At one point during Thrilly Adventure Hour, I thought, like, do you think everybody would? Do you think they want to go to IHOP? <laughs> There's an IHOP nearby, and we could all cram into one booth, and we're sure. singing the Sparks Nevada theme yeah. together. At the and top order of our lungs. one order of fries for the whole table, <laughs> and everyone gets a water, but one person gets a Diet Coke, and then I, you keep refilling that soda. Oh, I never did. I never did the everybody shares one thing. I'd be like, I'm here to get a meal. Yeah. I came to play. <laughs> I'm not here. I ain't messing around. Yeah. I'm Come not... on, guys. It's IHOP. The meal is four bucks. <laughs> yeah. There's no splitsies. Yeah. Just give me something big. Speaking of the pee and IHOP, yes. is a pancake a cake? For purposes of this, it's sweet. Sure. It's like a griddle cake. 
Yeah, yeah they are cakes. All right. There yeah. you go. Cakes are cakes. cakes are- I thought it was pies all the way, and then cakes are really bringing up uh, bringing up the rear on this. Is one. a waffle a cake? Um, no, a waffle's a waffle. You just pour the you just pour the batter. It doesn't really rise, I guess. Well, it does rise. So then, it but is it's not cake. baked, isn't it? No, it's ironed. It's ironed. But the iron's not baking yeah. it. Yeah, what is the it's iron? It's made in a to? forge. It's griddling. <laughs> it's like it's like Mjolnir. Yeah, exactly. Forged in the heart of a dying star. Exactly. Is your, is your waffle? Oh man, would you? I would love to eat a waffle that was forged in the heart of a dying star. Though it might get overcooked. <laughs> the fir- I still remember. I think I was like a teenager the first time I ever had ice cream on a waffle, mm-hmm. and that changed your life. I, I I was like, "There's no way waffles and ice cream. What? This is weird." It would be weird to do that. Then somebody brings me a perfect Belgian waffle mm-hmm. with mint chocolate chip ice cream on it. Ooh. And I, t- and I have a bite. I'm like, I was so mad. That it took I was that so long. mad at my parents that they never <laughs> told me. Like just for a moment. It wasn't like long lasting, but yeah. I just had that moment of like, why wasn't I told about this? <laughs> this is like one of the greatest things ever. And it's been kept from me. Yeah. For what? Yeah. For what reason? <sighs> I'm not being denied desserts here. I felt that way. I was much older. I was in my early 20s. I was in Los Angeles, and I felt that way about chicken on a waffle. Yes. Oh, chicken and waffles. That was the first time you'd ever had it? I never would had felt, it until that's a southern, Roscoe's. That's like a southern delicacy. You can get that uh, in the south. It's much more plentiful. I Not where I was. I would imagine. Or not in my recollection. Hey, Jen. Jennifer. Yeah. Did you have chicken and waffles when you were a kid? See, I did. I don't she think it was. It came I didn't think it was in the South. It didn't boom until like Roscoe's had it here forever, and it was famous. Oh, uh, Gladys Knight has it in in Atlanta, or had mm-hmm. it in Atlanta. She had a chicken and waffles restaurant yeah. there, so maybe that's why I thought it. And then it uh, went out of business. Oh. It's not Gladys. It's sorry, called. Gladys Knight. So, sorry, yeah. you're just a successful musical legend. Yeah, with a with a failed chicken restaurant. Uh, I really wish that chicken restaurant was called Pips with an apostrophe. <laughs> I'm eating, eating <laughs> some chicken and waffles down uh, in Georgia. <laughs> eating chickens and waffles down in Georgia. Woo woo. But we're not here to talk about chicken and waffles. No, we're, we're not. We're going to talk about cake versus pie. Hell. None of them count. None of those oh, count. All right. What else? This what is else hard. Is this is hard because now I feel like they're, they're, they're a little more neck and neck than they were. They are in dessert. That, mm-hmm. That's why I'm going like, let's think about hostess for a second. Okay. They make the Twinkie is a cake. The Twinkie is a cake. The the ding the hostess dong. cupcake is a cake. The ho ho is a cake. That was my go to. Yeah. The cupcake with the uh with the little swirl on yeah. the top. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are um, the are those the ho hos? No, the ho hos. No, are that's the just rolls. called a cupcake. That's just called a yeah. cupcake. Those were in the vending machine at the theater school at DePaul University, oh, Lord. and those are the reason that uh the roles I played when I was a senior at that school were uh usually like the Jolly Rotund Innkeeper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ate your way to Falstaff. Exactly. <laughs> sure. I did eat my way to Falstaff. Yeah, hundred percent. Oh man, I loved it. I uh And the pies, like I love let's those you know, pies. since we're talking about we're talking about uh, like vending machine versions yes. now. Yes. I think there are better vending machine cakes than there are vending machine pies. I love. All you have are those weird glaze like look like they just look like like uh sort of uh empanadas wet calzones. Yeah. Yeah. They do, but the icing is so good. I love I love those when I'm eating them, but the the acid reflux is almost immediate. Yeah. I don't Your know. body rejects those <laughs> yeah, instantly. Are, that icing is liquid fire that they've somehow just managed to put in some sort of a stasis until you bite into it. And then it's like, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Did you like not being in pain? Because that's over now. Uh, I'm in your system. You're a Philadelphian. Yes. Um, tasty you have tasty cake. cakes. Yes. Those do not give you acid reflux. And the only real. They don't have a pie version, do they? They do. They do. They have, they're, they're, they look like pillows. Mm hmm. More than the crescents. They don't have the icing on them, except I think for the Dutch apple. There may be another mm-hmm. couple that have it. But generally, they have a really nice lemon pie that has the lemon curd in the middle. Mm-hmm. They have cherry, like apple. Lemon curd pie. They're really, really good. It's got, uh, it's not as tasty a crust. It's a, it's a blander crust. So that's an yeah. issue, but it's, it always tastes fresher mm-hmm. than Hostess, which is not hard to do because Hostess is made to have a long shelf life. Right. Uh, um, now you've, um, you've got me thinking, you mentioned the lemon curd and the different kinds of pies. Yes. 
I feel like Pi has a Pi has a benefit in this in that you can pretty much make a dessert pie in any flavor, any dessert flavor you can make in pie form. Cake kind of always is cake. I will say, you know what I mean? It is, but you can make you can make a lemon cake. Just the, it can't be your in, look. You, it's not in the you dough. Cannot, I get you it. cannot list off for every one different kind of cake you could list. I could give you five pies. I will tell you that one of my favorite dishes in the world is a Jewish apple cake. Oh yeah, which is I don't know. I, Jennifer has normally made them for my birthday this year. Mm-hmm. I asked her not to because I'm back on Weight Watchers mm-hmm. and the, they are a lot of points and I would not be able to control myself because it is <laughs> moist. Wait, you're telling me that a cake is a lot of points in Weight Watchers? <laughs> I know. I know. That company's garbage. I know. They're really bad at what they do. Do you? They want you to eat less. Do they give you extra points on your birthday? No. It's not. They don't. <laughs> You're do you get twice as many points in a construction zone? Uh huh. Yeah, that you do. <laughs> nice. That you definitely do. And in in Montana, you can eat whatever you want. There's no limit. <laughs> there's no there's no points limit. Yeah, they just they just got rid of it all together. Uh, but it's it's baked in a bunt pan, and it's it's apples and this like sugar cinnamon mixture, mm-hmm. so it gets like soppy. And you mix it in with the dough, and then you bake it. And when you turn it over, first of all, it's perfection out of the gate. The cake mm-hmm. is moist. It's got a, like a crispy kind of crust on the outside. But then like two days later, it evolves into something magical. Ooh. It gets better the longer it sits. Oh, like That's that. pretty amazing. Like B. Arthur. It's like B. Arthur. It gets better yeah. and better. Maud was great, but the Golden Girls was even greater. We've talked about, uh, the 1984 NBC special or 85. Where Charlotte Ray and, uh, and B. Arthur sing a song about all the shows that are coming to the fall season. It's, it's Nell Carter mm-hmm. and B. Arthur and Charlotte Ray, Alfonso Ribeiro and Marla Gibb and Soleil Moonfry wow. singing We Are a Family from Dream Girls. Okay. So, so it starts with Nell Carter. Turn this off, everybody, and turn on YouTube. Immediately put that on. <laughs> uh, it starts with Nell Carter. It becomes like a singing contest. Right. Which, in any iteration of those uh people, uh Nell Carter is going to win. Yeah, she is the best. At the she end, she is such a great singer. I mean, B. Arthur performs it really, really yeah. well when she comes in. But she's she a does baritone. The, yeah, she goes. She comes in. She's like, "It's more than me. It's more than you, and it's more than me." And then she gives this like take to the camera. And she goes, "No matter what we are, we are a family." <laughs> Uh, but at the, at the very end, they're all singing together and mm-hmm. then Nell Carter's in the background and she just at a certain point decides like, oh, I'm going to take this over. And she starts doing runs over everybody oh. and it's just. Yeah. It's Nell Carter going, get out of the way, TV people. A Broadway legend is here. That's it. hundred percent. hundred percent. Be Arthur, a Broadway legend. A Broadway in legend life. as well. That's true. But, but a Broadway vocalist legend. Yes. Uh, is Nell Carter. Nell Carter, uh, Tony winner. Mm hmm. So uh, that is well worth your time, especially see if you can figure out is Alfonso Ribeiro sharp or flat. <laughs> that is a good music lesson for you. The answer is he's flat, <laughs> super flat. Very talented, great entertainer. Sure. He was he was a little pitchy was this, dog. Was this uh, Silver Spoons era? This was Silver Spoons era. I always wanted that little train to run around my house. And two two seven was starting. So Marla, just Jack A's weird voice, or Mar- oh, Marla it's Gibb. It's Marla Gibb. So they they cro- she and Nell Carter cross each other on the stairs, and uh, Nell Carter's like, "I'm so excited for your new show, Two Two Seven. And then Marla Gibb's like, "Well, you know, I love your show, girl." And Nell Carter just goes, "Get out of here!" And then walks away. <laughs> but it feels like I know she's I, I know it's being said jovially, but it really feels like get the f out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Nell Carter. I'm out of here. I like to think that they didn't think their mics were on. Yeah. And that's just how they talk to each other. Like, love your show. Love your show. <laughs> <laughs> but now Carter was like, love your show. Get out of Get here. Get out of here. Get off my turf. Um, man, this is tough. I, <sighs> because now I'm also thinking, as I said, I said before, I was like, you name one cake and I can think of a million pies. But now you, st- you mentioned bunt cake. And uh-huh. then I thought, oh yeah, there's not just, Sheet cakes. There's bunt cake. Yeah. There's pineapple upside down cake, which is a bunt cake. Uh, yes. There's fruit cake. Yes. There's uh, panettone. Yes. Uh, which is, as an Italian, one of my all time favorites. That's a dome, right? That's the uh, yeah, with the paper wrapped around the outside that you have to remember to take off. Yes. Because there has been more than one occasion when I cut right into it and ate a little bit of paper. 
And it's not like that old gum where you're supposed to eat the paper. Yeah. Um, this you're not supposed to eat the paper. I don't think any of those gum you were actually supposed to eat the paper because I used to. I tried I that thought for you were a while. Eating all of them. I, <laughs> you were you were having like juicy fruit and just chewing, just chewing on that paper. Tin foil. Yeah. But I got <laughs> my my teeth got a lot of radio stations. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Hal. Yes. We got to figure this out, buddy. Yes, we do. What wins? It's it's very tough. I what do you get? You you're asking me I all get these a questions. Pie. You get a pie every time. But here's the thing. I get a pie, but I it, it this reminds me of our episode where we talked about um sitting in a window seat or an aisle seat. Right. There is something magical about a window seat where you get to see the world. There is something magical about a cake that makes it memorable, that makes it special. Mm -hmm. A pie is a delicious dessert. It's also a pizza. It's also a Hot Pocket. It's also a million other things. It's also how armies marched without using plates and uh, utensils on ships. Right. Or navies sailed, I guess. Um, But do all of those beat... A special occasion, a memorable moment. If I'm having cake, it's usually because it's someone I care about's birthday or it's some a, a couple that I love is getting married or some it marks an occasion. You know, you mentioned some some cakes you remember very mm-hmm. well and you had you had a pretty detailed description. Mm-hmm. What about pies? Any pies you remember? I don't remember why I was having them. I remember having a great apple pie at one point in a, uh, my mom made a great apple pie. Mm-hmm. She made a great blackberry pie. We'd pick blackberries out in the patch behind our house and we'd bring them in and she'd make pie out of them. Yeah. Um, but I don't remember the occasions like I do with a cake. Right. A cake, a cake's mark time in a way that pies don't. Do, oh, right. Feels, I'm saying, yeah. is that fair to say? Yeah. And I'm in not my making mind, that that, I know, but decision. that feels like a, that feels like an answer. That it, oh. I they know. do. It's true. Pies are because you took off the table the importance of pies and their ubiquitousness in the history of the world. What we have with cake is they are their presence in all of the most important moments in an individual's life. Let me ask you this. Okay. First of all, uh, um. Oh my God. Why can't I think of it? I had the name of tiramisu. That's cake. Um, it has cake. It has element cake. To it. Well, it, it has lady fingers espresso. In it. Okay. Then which are little cake cookies it. that can go screw. Uh, <laughs> also it tastes like somebody spilled coffee on my dessert. <laughs> I didn't ask for that. I didn't ask for it. And what is the chocolate dust on it? That doesn't have flavor. It. It's not, that's not, that's unfinished. Just put a, you might as well just put like the box top on it. And go, well, this was going to be something, but yeah. instead, here's a Hershey's label. <laughs> or have a wedding cake that the topper is just a label that says Duncan Hines and a label that says Betty Crocker. <laughs> it's like when you eat donuts, the powdered one. Oh, man. And eventually, you're just like, oh, this powder, I thought this powder was a good idea until I started eating it. Yeah. Now and it's just powder. It's just drying everything out. Oh, man. If you get donuts, get the chocolate coated ones. Oh, this worst chocolate. I know. It tastes like wax, but at least it doesn't get all over your clothes. That's a good reason. To, that's a good reason yeah. to get it. And the driver's seat, because let's be honest, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if I'm eating a sleeve of donuts, <laughs> I'm usually driving. Oh, do you know the best way to eat donuts? How? You take the top one and the bottom one, and then you smash them all together and eat it as a sandwich, <laughs> like a cupcake. Yeah. Do you do you think it's more likely you're going to get a bad piece of cake or poorly made cake than poorly made pie when you order it? Um, like it's easier to – because a cake is so complex. Mm-hmm. Like I've made cakes before. I've made layer cakes a few different times. Mm-hmm. The most ambitious one, I made the icing. What well, was chocolate icing? And then I made – I melted Andy's chocolates to make a shell. How did on the Andy outside, feel it said I mint chocolate. You know what? Andy was upset. Oh, Andy's mints, like the pillow mint. No, Andy the person okay. from Toy Story. <laughs> I, I melted that bastard down and – Poured him all over. Which is tough because he's the human. Yeah. Yeah, he is. It's not Uh, like there was a human pie once. Another quick story I learned today. Yeah. Uh, human pie for the char, was it Charles the first? It was a long time ago. 
Uh, it was a royal occasion and they wheeled out this giant pie and right as the queen was about to cut into it, hey, out the top of the pie comes their, uh, the prince dressed, uh, in all of his full armor. What? Which is kind of a hilarious image and I hope there's a painting of it somewhere. And then they had, of there. course, you know, a person popping out of a cake is a classic. Yes, that's true. Yeah. That's where Erica so, Leniak is hiding in Under Siege. <laughs> that's right. She's waiting to pop out of the cake, and then she winds up being a hero and helping stop a bunch of terrorists from taking over a submarine. Wow. So we call that one a wash? Yeah, that's a wash. All right. Uh, was she wearing armor? By the end, she was wearing clothing, <laughs> which was pretty good for uh, a female uh, person character. person who was in a cake. Yeah, a female character in an action film in the 90s. Yeah, that's so true. She was able to get fully clothed at some point. Uh, oh, man. I, for me, I think, to answer your question, I yeah. think, um, I don't think I've had that many bad cakes. Uh, what I was going to say I've was, had some poorly made pies. There's always something off when I make it. It's either too dense or too light or too right. dry or too wet. Like that, you taste that mm-hmm. or what passes for a cake. Some people love that, that really fake sugar that you get at like a, uh, like Walmart or Target or your supermarket. What do you mean really? Like the pre-made sugar? cake where it's just like really low quality icing and the mm-hmm. cake's not great. Like we, like a sheet cake, like a right. standard kind of birthday sheet cake. Right. I think those are terrible. I cannot stand that. A homemade one's great. A homemade one is great, yeah. but that's rare. Mm-hmm. Homemade cake is – I don't feel like we get that a lot. I feel like you go to a, a specialty bakery unless you're a baker yourself. It's Do been a have- long time. I think I had those when I was a kid. Um, But now it's – you get like a nice – I get like a – for a birthday, you get like a nicer layer cake. The best thing about the sheet cake is the decoration. Sure. Um, But uh, but no, I, you know what? No, I, I – the yellow cake with the chocolate frosting, that is usually a sheet cake. Of course, I'm usually having a homemade version because that is – that feels like a classic, like, hey, I've come to a party. I made a cake. Yeah. Yeah. Are you doing like the Duncan Hines where you get a mix or do you make it from scratch by yourself? Oh, it's, I'm usually not the one making it. But if I do uh, make one, it's nearly always out of a box. Sure. Yeah. Those I like the one okay. that's got the the little bit of the pudding in it. You ever had that? Is that Duncan Hines? Uh, no, I'm Pillsbury. Okay, sure. Right? I think. Why not? Sure. Do you think that – do you think the Pillsbury Doughboy has a eating disorder? <laughs> Because <laughs> he can't have carbs because it's cannibalism? Yes. Probably. Also, I mean, he's into tickle. He's, on, yeah. he's into tickle play, which is there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> no, man. That's whatever your thing is. But I wonder about how he eats. Like, you don't really see him, like, with vegetables or ever. He's just always hanging around cakes. He's like, never wearing clothes. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah. He's like the Guy Fieri of food <laughs> mascots. You're like, stay away. <laughs> Look, I, nothing personal against you, but you should stay out of the food. <laughs> don't, don't walk your doughy junk around. <laughs> When I'm trying to make dessert. He also doesn't have genitals. There. Well, he did at one point, I bet. <laughs> who knows who, who knows whose cake that is? That's like a king cake. <laughs> you don't want the baby. A king cake. There you go. That's another, uh, uh. Describe a king cake. A king cake is, is like a ring cake. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's got purple, gold, green. It's got all the Mardi Gras flavors on it. And then you eat it. Mm-hmm. It's maybe more of a Danish almost than a. Yeah. Than a cake, but you, you eat it and then there's a plastic baby in it somewhere. If you get the piece oh. of the baby, that's good luck. It's like a 12th night cake. Yes. Similar idea. 12th night cake is, uh, on the 12th night of Christmas, uh, you, uh, in, I'm not sure where it started. I think France. Mm-hmm. Um, and you would, you would have a party and there would be a bean and a pea. And whoever got the bean, uh, in their slice of cake was the king of the party. And whoever got the pea in their slice of cake was the queen of the party. And you had to listen to whatever they said for the rest of the night. I don't want any pea in my cake at all. <sighs> Is the Pillsbury Doughboy peeing right in cakes? That, didn't yeah, I? don't pee in my cake. It's not a urinal. Oh, do urinal cakes count? No. Those are cakes. No. You can pee in those cakes if you wanted to. <laughs> How? You think the Pillsbury Doughboy ever went to the bathroom? Or do you think it just he just keeps it all inside? I guess he well, you mean he can eat. He uh, does I'll tell you this. Every time you on. hear that <laughs> when you poke his tummy, it's not his mouth. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, that's how he releases it. Yeah. It gets converted directly into gas. Yeah. No, it gets diverted, converted directly into sound. Oh. I don't even know how he does it. Boy, that, is he the next evolutionary step? The I Pillsbury so. Doughboy? Is that where we're headed? Yeah, we convert food to sound. But we'll need somebody to carry us around because we'll only we'll just be hanging out on countertops. <laughs> Do you think he was ever trapped on somebody's countertop for a really long time? Yeah, until the, uh, the hamburger helper walked his hand over like, uh, <laughs> like, uh, thing from the Adams family and just, 
knocked him off with one finger. That's not even how he walks. His fingers are his hair. <laughs> he hops oh, that's everywhere. Right. His fingers are his hair. He's the dumbest living glove <laughs> ever. How do you design? I guess if you design him the other way and like he's walk, you had like a glove walking towards the camera like a spider going, mix hamburger with me for a yeah. meal. <laughs> That would be a lot scarier than than him just sitting upright and you going, yeah. well, I have no idea how he gets around. Certainly, he's fallen over. Yeah. And how does he get up? The fingers, which would be pushing him up, or his hair. Yeah. I don't know how. I don't remember. I think the Pillsbury Doughboy helps him up. Do those articulate um, his fingers? No. That's why in all the commercials, he's like, <laughs> he really should articulate more. You can't understand what he's saying at no, all. Not a word. Those fingers don't do anything. Right? They just sit – it's not like he goes like, this is good food, and then all of a sudden his hair makes the okay sign. Right? <laughs> that never happens. That would be amazing. Oh, my God. I would right? love that. And But he had no control over it. Like the, he, there was a constant battle like Bruce Banner and the Hulk between the fingers on top of, of Hamburger Helper's head <laughs> and his base. Yeah. Which is just a palm and a cuff. And a weird like red cuff on a white glove. Yeah. And like every once in a while the fingers like drop down and smack him in the face just to like <laughs> assert dominance. And then rice a walks by and one finger shoots straight up toward the <laughs> ceiling. Ding, ding. Um, that's, that's actually not a cable car. That's, it's being censored. <laughs> so you can't hear the curses. You won't hear them here either. We're a family show. That's right. I do wonder if the Pillsbury Doughboy was once, like, if he, his arm got caught under a roller and it was like 127 hours. <laughs> and he had to go. But the most delicious version of 127 hours? Yeah. He had to go roll a new arm for himself. Cause he could probably make his own arm. Like, yeah, his whole body would just be slightly smaller. Yeah. Hamburger But does he have to get re-rolled entirely? Yeah. You know, like Ooh. when you have a little bit of dough left over and you're like, well, I can roll this out into one more little pizza. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's like, no, I need a new arm. <laughs> Is it cake or pie, Hal? I'm more interested. In, I'm really less interested in that now and more interested. Hal, in, we have a job to do. I think I think I think it's cake, even though I prefer pie. I think for so, dessert. too. I think for it's the a, for the special occasionness of it, it's more special. I yeah. love cr- like the craziness, but I also think back to like one time the Acker and I got dinner, mm-hmm. and then afterwards it was like, "Hey, you want to get pie?" And he's down. Uh huh. He's always down. Like I found great dessert places. He that is one thing he and and Blacker shares an affinity for food. Well, and Blacker's and, mother is a and father yes. are, run a bakery. well. Yeah, they run a bake shop. Ben and Julie are like two of the greatest cooks. Yeah, there there's always something great cooking at their at their place. But mm-hmm. but Acker shares with them an acuity to for finding really great restaurants in Los mm-hmm. Angeles. So we went to like a pie place downtown, and it was so great. It was like uh, there's something more social about pie. Than cake. Like I associate that with – like Acker and I went and got See, some – we got a slice of pie. I think that th- – I associate um, one-on-one social with pie. I associate group social with cake. Well, I when I was doing um, The People versus Friar Lawrence mm-hmm. in, in LA, Mike Ross, Joe Zanetti, Bruce Green and I would go to House of Pies after every show. Mm-hmm. We would do it after rehearsals at a certain point too. That's where we would get dinner. We would hang out for like three hours and we, you would get pie. At some point mm-hmm. you would get pie. And that was just part of that social exper- experience. I know it's not a big group gathering. It's not a wedding. If we had had a pie at our wedding, that would have been really weird. Yeah. I did go to a wedding that was all pies. Really? Yeah. And their, their wedding colors were the rainbow. So, uh, they had a, a, a pie of each color. So the red was a, uh, cherry pie. The orange was a, I think, sweet potato pie. Uh, yellow was lemon pie. Uh, and working your way down and they had the, they had the green four was rainbow. key lime. Green was key lime. Blue was blueberry. Blue was, I believe, blueberry. Yeah. Was indigo. What were indigo and violet? Uh, indigo and, uh, maybe a grape pie. Nightshade. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and uh, in the indigo pie was just uh, a totally vegan, gluten-free hemp pie that the indigo girls brought over. Oh, that's really, really cool. It was though. really nice of them. Did they play music? They did. But only when you took a slice of their pie? Exactly. They would play for as long as you were eating it. They would follow you <laughs> to your table and sing Galileo. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> that said, I can't get past the special occasion thing now. Can't. Hold on a second. Hey, Jennifer. 
See if she comes out here. See if my wife comes out here. She loves cakes. I just want to know why. I want to know why she prefers cake to pie. Okay. I'm very interested. Okay. In why. Will she emerge? I think no? pie is more important, but I think cake wins. Uh, let me, let me, I'm going to text her. She's in the other room. I know she's got. How? We can do in. this. You want to do it without my wife? Yeah. Okay, fine. We don't need to lean on your wife we for don't everything, Hal. I do. I know you do. I'm lost. I'm lost <laughs> I know, in this I know world. you are, Punkin. Uh, That's why you got me also. <laughs> I have two wives. I'm your show wife. Come on, show wife, Hal. <sighs> it's cake. Yeah, I guess it is. I kind of don't want it to be. I don't want it to be either, but. But it is cake. But for the important moments of life when uh, a group of people gather around. Yeah. Nobody, nobody blows out the candles on a birthday pie. That's right. Nobody makes a triple decker pie. You need multiple. All right. People of the world. If we all got together, all of us to hang out, we could commission a giant cake to be made. But if we made a pie, it would look like double dare. <laughs> it would look like double dare. You couldn't all have a piece of it. What do you want to jump in and find the flag in your dessert? You don't want that. We get a big cake. If it's pies, it's like, all right, I went to Albertsons or wherever. I got every pie they have. And then I had to go over to Walgreens and find a pie they sold there. I don't know why they have pies. Oddly, they have a real – did you ever notice that Walgreens is a huge liquor yeah, oh yeah. Selection here. Oh yeah. So you're either going there to get ill or get better. <laughs> I think you, if you go there, you should have to get, or like they should sell liquor with packets of aspirin taped to it. Ooh, I like that. Hey, you need it later and on caffeine. anyway, right? Yeah. You One can, of those little five hour energies. You let Continue, no dose. please. Anyway, uh, point. Oh, is, we never mentioned the chirpumple. Sorry. Keep oh, going. the chirpumple. Let's talk about uh, that for a second. Okay, real quick. Did you learn about this from Charles Phoenix as well? I think so. Yeah. The chirpumple is the turducken of desserts. Yes. It is, uh, three pies inside of a giant, uh, three tier cake. I know we've talked about uh, this a cherry before. pumpkin and an apple and pie. An apple. Yeah. Uh, the apple pie, I think, is inside a white cake. The cherry pie is inside a chocolate cake and the pumpkin pie is inside a spiced carrot cake. I right. Believe. And then you eat that. And then you eat that whole thing and then you die yeah you immediately die yeah so is the winner your pumple yeah the, the winner's winner, cake the winner is cake it's cake if we all get together somewhere then you have a cake to celebrate that everybody can have a piece that's the other thing about a cake is you can make a giant cake where everybody gets one again we're not playing double dare here <laughs> although i wish i had been i sometimes i think the giant hands on that are like the hamburger helper <laughs> <laughs> those are the idols then what's the to? giant ear uh the, the rest of that body yeah that's the rest of whatever's left could you make a whole man out of the uh the pieces that you have to walk through in Double Dare? Yeah, it would look like a Picasso, but it would it would be a person. All right. Asked and answered. Asked and answered. It's cake. Cakes make the world go round. Everybody can have cake together. And that that outweighs the everyday look, the pie is the workhorse. Easy mm-hmm. as pie. But uh cakes take the cake. That's the wow. that's the grand prize here. That's it. Well, Did that make any sense to you? No, take it up with the Pillsbury Doughboy. He's probably trapped behind a bag of chips in your kitchen right now. <laughs> or not trapped, just hiding. Do you think there are multiple ones or there's just one? Ooh, I don't know. How does he travel? Well, there's a Pillsbury Doughboy. That means there's a Pillsbury Dough mom and dad. There were. Well, that's a sad story. Before they fell into an oven. This topic is closed, They're but there are many more cookies, topics to discuss. Like so please man. reach out to us on Twitter at We Got This Tweets. Check out the Maximum Fun subreddit. <laughs> subreddit? I can't while you're Look, doing Sublet Maximum Fun <laughs> on Reddit. You can sublet it. It's available. We have rooms available for you to argue with one another. Uh, but uh, you can email us at We Got This Podcast at gmail.com. But let me sell you what, what I think is the gold standard. For interacting with us or one of us. Sometimes you've gotten on there sometimes. Everyone's Facebook, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash we got this podcast. If you have a Facebook account, you don't go on often. Just bookmark that site, that URL and go there and interact with a group of people who do not suck, uh, and are there having a good time. And I love the, the, there are, there are topics that are brought up there that will never be on the show just because they're so hyper specialized, but mm-hmm. they spark so much debate. And conversation in like a fun way. And I love that. It like does, it makes my heart feel good that we've created a safe space for people to have friendly arguments online. That is very, very rare. Amen. Yeah. Uh, that is it. Thank you to producer Ken Plume, researcher Kate McManus, graphic designer Uri Kelman and QA engineer Jen Alba. 
And thank you to our musicians, Jonathan Dinerstein and Mike Furman, for our score and theme song, respectively. And thanks to you, our listeners. We want to bake a great big cake. Yeah. And we want to put a bajillion candles on it for each year of all of our lives. So thousands and thousands of candles. Maybe. And then as soon as we blow out those candles and have a piece of that cake, we're going to jump in that big double dare pie. Can't wait. For Hal Loveland, I'm Mark Gagliardi. For Mark Gagliardi, I'm Hal Loveland. And don't worry, everybody. We We got got this. this. We got this. Maximumfun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported.